this is my peak hour. This is where I have the most energy. Peak so, hour, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a note of that, I think. Lucky you. Hey, I'm Fadela, and you're about to see my chat with Spoon. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, good, good. One of the things I talk about with emerging talent is burnout, how to avoid burnout, and just yeah. being aware of how we're looking after ourselves. When you're in a studio for hours on end or on the road traveling, it's hard to prepare the right food. It's so tempting to end up um, snacking and, and eating bad yeah. things and also to not get enough exercise, rest and water on board. So sure. bearing with that in mind, what three tips would you give I mean, for me, the number one tip is just noticing how you feel when you eat food. Because noticing how you feel is going to be a great indicator of whether or not the sort of food that you're picking are working for you, energy-wise especially. The number two is to forget about these tight deadlines and like going all extreme black and white. It didn't happen overnight, so it's going to take some time. So all I say in terms of exercise, even if you do five minutes, 10 minutes a day, so what? That's very manageable. It doesn't have to be at a fancy schmancy gym or anything like that. At home is fine. And the third one is noticing when you go on autopilot. You know, when you finish, like whether it's recording or long day at work and you go home and you're just like, oh, I must eat something. Okay, what's going on? Check in first, check in how you're going into this, you know, eating process. Is it out of stress? What are you going for? And if something needs to be addressed, just check in, slow down, and address that need that you're having. I wanted to be able to read your book before to talk yeah. to you about it. Um, but we're just going to go in raw. I read a little bit about it and, you know, the whole thing. You know, do you eat for comfort? Do you have a history of dieting? Yeah. Do you wish you could control yourself around food? Yeah. Um, and just the psychology of what leads us to comfort eat and all that kind of stuff. So I thought that was really interesting to delve into because everything in life is about mindset and and figuring out who you are from the inside out before you even yeah. get up out of your bed to do anything so please talk to me about this book this book really was more uh, it, it was a healing process for me too and for many many years and when i say many years like i'm 31 and i'm talking at least 15 years i was convinced that something outside of myself was going to fix my problems. And for some reason, I picked my weight as the biggest culprit for everything that was going wrong in my life. I didn't have the friendships that I wanted to have because I was overweight. I didn't have the relationships, romantic relationships I wanted because I was overweight. And it was just like a really, really easy target to justify my lack of fulfillment. But what I failed to notice, even though it went on forever, is that it was a huge coping mechanism for me that I developed from a very young age. My mind was holding on to it so tightly because it worked when I was eating, I wasn't worrying, I wasn't beating myself up, and I was just kind of like numb. So it was a very effective coping mechanism and yeah, we didn't wanna let go of it. And this is where most people go wrong when they think that, oh, you know what, that diet, like once I lose those 10 pounds, 20 pounds, however many pounds, like I'm gonna feel okay. And I've been there where I've weighed, you know, 10 kilos less than I weigh now, and I still felt fat, I felt inadequate, and I felt unfulfilled. So guess what, what did I do? I looked for my best friend, food. And the cycle continues. You know, I cannot emphasize enough that there is no diet in the world that will fix emotional eating. It's as simple as that. People who you see on TV who lose weight and then keep it off forever do it because they just didn't understand that, you know, they were eating too much junk food or and then once they figure it out, they're like, oh, easy, I'll just eat healthy and they stick with it. But for the rest of us, very, you know, informed and aware and knowledgeable people, it's not information that we're lacking. It's the understanding of how our emotions function and how to deal with them. And how did you strip away what it was about your emotions and that connection? Because nothing was working, like nothing. I tried personal trainers, dietitians, nutritionists, hypnotherapy, you name it, I've tried it. Some things did help a little bit. Obviously, exercise is a must for me. I love it. I've been exercising for, you know, years and years. But it was still like, okay, what's going on when I'm sitting alone at home in the evening? 
and I just have this void inside and I don't know what to do with myself. And then I just reach for food. It's, you know, like, it's almost like a gasping mechanism. It's just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't want to feel this. This is uncomfortable. Let me get something. Yeah. And, and yeah. And just the denial phase was over. And then the weight was just a byproduct of me not wanting to feel. I do not care like whether you weigh 200 kilos or 50 kilos, that's irrelevant to me. As long as you're healthy and you're happy with yourself, hey, I'm fine. But it's more like we all know deep down, like if we ask ourselves and we're truly honest, we know that we're either worrying about food all the time or even when we're eating, we're feeling guilty about it. And there's this dis dis ease around food. And that comes from not being able to deal with emotions. And, uh, you know, other people go for, you know, video games or binge drinking. There, there's a lot of binging uh, in this world. So could you share with us some of the frustrations that your clients are coming to you with and uh, some of the success stories you're having? I've summarized my client's struggle in like one like very simple cycle. So it's basically, you know, we have we've overindulged over the Christmas period or whatever it was, and we decide that we need to diet, we need to lose weight. We lose weight, yay, we celebrate, it's amazing. And then what happens? We go out and we celebrate with food, and then something goes wrong and we celebrate with more food, and then we feel guilty. We try to undo the damage, it doesn't work, so what do we do? We eat some more. And then next thing you know, we gain weight and we have to diet again, and it goes on and on and on and on, and it's very tiring. <laughs> ultimately the deep goal that they think is losing weight and it's really funny because i always smile i never say oh no you don't need to lose weight that's not for me to say but then slowly we realize that weight is not really the problem it's their strategies and for a lot of my clients who are very successful they have excellent strategies when it comes to work and business but somehow they haven't managed to translate them in this other area, which is emotional well-being. So once I help them draw these barrels, so look at that, like how do you manage tight deadlines at work when things go wrong, when you have pressure, investment, blah, blah, blah. Let's see how you manage that with your personal life, relationships, kids, whatever it is. And when we manage to reconcile that, it works beautifully. And the, the frustrations are, well, I don't know what to eat. I don't know what to eat, but I need to lose weight. I, like I, I've gained weight. Like I get that and I acknowledge that, but it didn't happen overnight. So you're going to have to deal with the root cause before you can actually see the results physically. And we're just in a hurry, aren't we? Yeah. We want it now. We want results now. Yeah. So what are some your your strategies to kind of make sure that you keep your energy uh, and your fuel to the level you need? To perform so for me i went through a period of of working out why i do what i do and part of yeah. that was recognizing i ate too much because when i was a kid uh, when bad things happened i would go to that to lift my spirits and make myself feel good about, yeah. good about things and as a as a man now what i do is i love martial arts and and also being around people that are eating healthy and it's a, it's a way of life for them, encourages me to go off and do similar things. Um, I've now gone from eating lots of meat and all this kind of stuff to yeah. now, pe now pescatarian, aiming towards being vegetarian and maybe vegan eventually. Um, I've, I've changed my eating habits. Portion sizes was just my thing. Yeah. Like I'd, I'm like, yeah, I'm a big man. I need like a, <laughs> a mountain. <laughs> I, I need to climb into the plate <laughs> to be able to eat. Otherwise, it's not a real meal. <laughs> Addressing those things. And again, not feeling bad about it. And I get my joy from doing other things and not attaching, celebrating, having fun to food. I don't need to go out and have a meal to celebrate. I can do something else. And it, sure. but it does take time piecing that together. I was always the fat kid at school, you know what I mean? And that had, that had a real impact on me. And again, I had to have this real turning point in my life where I said, you know what, I'm happy with who I am. And if I want to lose weight for health reasons, that's the only reason I'm going to do it. And it's and, and that's changed my whole thing. I'm like, hey, I'm a plus size model. I'm going to go, I'm beautiful in my yeah. skin. And this is me. And, um, just and you're relaxed about it. Yeah, just let go of. Yeah. What other people think, um, letting go of that and just knowing, what, how do I feel? Am I healthy? No, then I need to do this, this and this. But in the meantime, I'm still me. We all go through it and we all make these mindful changes over time. Yeah. Like you you didn't go all like, okay, fine, vegan, overnight, that's it. Bring it on. Absolutely. Right. I, I recognize that being a musician, 
I was doing some crazy stuff, man. Just staying up all <laughs> kinds of hours. And then you start ordering the food to the studio. And you can, when you're younger, your metabolism's a lot higher and you just burn through it. It's no issue. And then you start to feel really, forget how you look. You just feel tired. Yeah, you just can't that's do anything. it. You can't function. I'm like, there's so much I want to do. I need to have the right fuel in my body. A man of my size. Uh, I can move and do things and, and, and be as functional as, as I am. But it's because I don't smoke. If I do drink, it's because I'm on a beach somewhere and I'll just have like a cocktail and then that'll be <laughs> it. Uh, and I, I really do think about my food. Um, and yeah, it's just like, man, just there are other things about life that are important. And in the meantime, I'm going to just explode with some great energy into the universe yeah. and, and keep it moving. Yeah, and feeling good. It's all about feeling good, right? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's been awesome. Thank you. Bye.